genes, but still it's not anywhere near as long as a chromosome itself is. Yes, sir? How many base pairs when I say short? Okay. So looking at uh, an average gene in uh, prokaryotes, for example, we might see a, a sequence that would go anywhere from 1,000 uh, base pairs up to maybe 20,000 base pairs, something like that. Okay. Whereas we've got a chromosome in, in bacteria that are 6 million base pairs. So it's significantly shorter than the DNA itself is. RNA is different from DNA. Cells use DNA to pass information from one generation to the next. RNA is disposable. In fact, cells make it and they break it down. RNA is very disposable. And you want to be able to do that. We'll see why that occurs later. Okay. Very disposable. Well, before I talk about the uh, implications of all this, let's talk about the synthesis in general. And then we'll uh, move forwards. Okay. So general features. All right. RNA is initially synthesized using a DNA template. So of course that means RNA is copied from DNA. The enzyme that does. Okay. So we already said before it's called transcription. So you know that. The enzyme that catalyzes it is called an RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase. In E. coli, there's only one. E. coli only has one RNA polymerase for all the different things that it does. We have at least three. Okay? So in prokaryotes, RNA polymerase is only one. Instead of needing deoxyadenosine triphosphate, deoxyguanosine triphosphate, deoxycytosine triphosphate, and deoxythymidine triphosphate, we have ATP, GTP, CTP, and UTP. Notice the deoxy has disappeared. These are, these are ribonucleotides. Here's a big difference. We don't need a primer to make RNA. Don't need a primer. RNA polymerase can sit down and start synthesizing a strand without needing a primer. Just as we saw with DNA, polymerization occurs exclusively in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Only in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And we'll look at the nuts and bolts about how this happens in just a bit. OK. Now, I told you that the cell makes RNA in short stretches. That means at any given time, it's not copying the entirety of the chromosome. So then how does it decide what it's going to copy? Well, I said, first of all, that cells are making RNA Partly to make, to synthesize genes. What's a gene? Well, a gene, I think everybody has a, a handle on, but a definition would be useful. And the definition of a gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for a protein. A gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for a protein. So when a cell is making RNA of a gene, it's doing it so that ultimately it can make a protein from that sequence. Okay? So one of the things, one of the types of RNA we talked about that's being made during transcription is messenger RNA. That's the thing that carries the information for making the protein. Now, well, how does the cell decide which gene to copy? That's an important consideration. How does it decide which genes to copy? That's what I'm going to tell you about here. Okay? Remember when we talked about DNA replication a few minutes ago, I said DNA replication always occurs in a specific sequence called N. Where does DNA replication start? An origin, right? Okay. So it starts at an origin. In synthesis of RNA, we have, we have sequences where the RNA polymerase starts, but they differ from one gene to the next. They have some similarities usually. Okay. But they're not identical. The sequence that the RNA polymerase recognizes in the DNA is called a promoter. A promoter. So a promoter is a sequence that's recognized by the RNA polymerase. 
So now the RNA polymerase, all it has to do is go around looking for promoters and deciding to stop there and synthesize that RNA or not. Okay? That's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's a simple scheme of what happens. If we take a look at the place where transcription starts for given genes, and we analyze the sequences, we see something like this. This is the transcriptional start site, meaning that when we look at the RNA that's made for this particular sequence on DNA, the very first nucleotide that's made into that RNA is right there. That's an A. The very first one made for this one is a G. The very first one here is an A, T, A. Usually it's, it's a purine, A, G, A, A. Uh, there's a C and there's a T, but usually we see purines as the first nucleotide that's made in an RNA. Okay? Now, if we start from that point and we call that number one as the very first one that makes it into RNA, we can go backwards in the DNA and say, ask the question, are there any sequences in here that look similar between different genes? So what we see are a variety of genes. Here's the start, the plus one for each one, and now we look upstream and we see something interesting. These are all bacterial sequences. In bacteria, there's a common sequence called a prypno box. It's also called a tata box. The prypno box occurs approximately 10 nucleotides ahead of number, uh, nucleotide number one. So we call it the minus 10 sequence. Notice that the prypno box is in the DNA, not in the RNA because it's the DNA that the polymerase is binding to. We look at the sequence of these, they're pretty similar. They're all rich in AT. TAC, TGT, TGT, CAT, TAG, ACT. Very AT rich regions right there. When I talked about AT base pairs, what did I say about the hydrogen bonding of AT base pairs? It's weaker. There's only two hydrogen bonds for AT base pairs. There's three for GC. The more AT base pairs there are, the easier it is to pull the strands apart. And guess what the RNA polymerase is having to do when it starts synthesizing up here? It has to pull the strands apart. Okay? So this chemically makes a lot of sense. When we look in eukaryotic cells, we see a very similar sequence. It's located a little bit further away, but we see as we also see a Tata box. So it has to have some help in pulling the strands apart. So there are some proteins that help it to do that. All right, but let's, I don't want to complicate that right right here. Okay. All right. So the Tata box is there. We look further upstream and we see common sequences that appear up there, and the sort of commonality of those sequences is shown in brown. This one doesn't have a fancy name. It's called the minus 30 uh, region, okay? Or minus, minus, minus 35 region, sorry. Minus 35 region. What you see are the numbers here, the percent of the time that we see that particular nucleotide at that position. Look at the Pribno box. 79% of the time, that's a T. 95% of the time, it's an A. 44, 59, 51, 96, okay? So there's some very strong uh, uh, conservation of those sequences that are in there. Also within here, we see some strong conservation as well. What these sequences are telling the RNA polymerase is, hey, there's a gene here that you can copy. Now, the cell has thousands of genes. How is it that the polymerase sorts through those and makes the right amount of the protein that the cell needs? Let's think about this, OK? We can imagine that if the cell is needing energy, the cell needs to break down glucose, for example. It would be nice for the cell to have an awful lot of enzymes of glucose, uh, break, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of enzymes for breaking down glucose, because it's going to be needing that all the time. So you want to make a lot of those enzymes. On the other hand, for DNA replication, there's only one chromosome to duplicate. So two or three molecules of DNA polymerase would be enough. On the one hand, we're going to have thousands of copies of, we, the cell needs thousands of copies of enzymes for breaking down glucose, but only a handful of enzymes for making DNA. How does it decide? Well, there's a couple ways it decides. One is by the sequence 
of the promoter. The promoter is the sum of these two, by the way. So the promoter is the sum of those two. The closer the promoter sequence is to this Tata box, the more times RNA polymerase will bind and start making RNA right there. I'll repeat that. Okay? The closer the actual sequence is to the actual sequence of the Pribno box, of the perfect Pribno box, I should say, the more RNA will be made. So if we look at something like, let's say, here's TATAAT, we, here's a TATAAT right there, perfect. Okay? This guy is going to be made in a lot larger quantities than, say, this guy, which is a CATGAT. Why? The RNA polymerase doesn't, doesn't bind that as well as it binds to this guy. So slight variations in sequence change the likelihood that RNA polymerase is going to bind and start making RNA. Now it's important that the cell make the proper amount of RNA so it can make the proper amount of protein. Because if it starts making, let's say, DNA polymerases out the wazoo, it's wasting energy. It might lose some control about DNA replication. It might have some real big problems. If it didn't make enough enzymes to break down glucose, the cell won't have any energy and the cell is probably going to die. So having the proper balance of these is very important for the cell to be able to survive. Make sense? Questions on that? Yes, sir? You said the closer the Prigno box is to the... The closer the sequence is to this actual sequence, not physical location, but closer in sequence, the closer it is in sequence to that, the more likely that it's going to repli it's going to be copied. Okay. So, okay. So, when I uh, when I'm talking about closeness, I'm not talking about physical location. I'm not moving this. Here's a perfect Pribno box. Okay, if we compare all the Pribno boxes and we average them up, this is the sequence that we get of all the Pribno boxes. Okay? We look right here, this has an exact match for this. So what I'm saying is this gene will be made in great abundance because it's a perfect match. Whereas this gene, which is not a perfect match, will not be made in the same abundance. Make sense? Yes? Okay, so the promoter is the sum of these two control regions right here. This constitutes the promoter of this. In general, the promoter we simply refer to as the, the sequence ahead of where the gene actually is made. Okay? But more specifically, it is the Pribno box plus the minus 35 region. Yes, sir? It does, but not to the same extent the Pribno box. Good question, yeah. The question is, does, does the matchup here affect transcription as well? And uh, it does affect it, but not nearly to the extent that, that it does with the criminal box. Yes, sir? Are they weighted? Yes, that's what's right here. So 79%. Yes, yes, OK. So that tells us a little bit, and there's, there's many other levels of control, but that tells us a little bit. We start to see how cells are controlling how much of a given gene that they're making. They have to be able to do that. Like I said, we can't make too much of one and not enough of another, or the cell is going to be at a disadvantage. The cell may die. The cell doesn't live, however, a life uh, that is apart from the rest of the environment in which it's there. Let's imagine, for example, that um, I am a little uh, E. coli bacterium, and I'm out floating uh, in my gut, okay? Which is an interesting thought, isn't it? Okay, so it's floating in my gut, and I decide uh, to um, uh, drink uh, some beverage which is uh, full of heavy metals. Maybe I'm a kid and I'm eating, I'm eating uh, leaded paint. 